So may I speak in your name, God, the source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good evening on this um, Whit Sunday evening. And I have to say, you know, it pains me to say, but I have to admit that those early Christians were charismatics. Maybe not exactly like those charismatic Christians today, but women and men whose primary focus was not an intellectual belief about God and God's actions, but rather an overwhelming sense of the presence and activity of the Spirit in their lives in their own time. Do you know what? They expected miracles. They expected some to have gifts of healing. They believed God guided their daily lives through ecstatic utterances of the prophets and those who had the gifts of interpretation. And we saw that in the Acts of the Apostles, didn't we, in the reading tonight, if you remember, which was taken directly from the prophet Joel, recalling that actually there, were, there is a time when your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. That was the expectation of that early church. Equally as interesting, though, is how quickly this charisma, the charisma of that early church, the charismatic church, gave way to the institutional church we now recognise as our own church today. Even by the time of the first three Gospels were written, probably about 20 years, um, the last 20 years of the first century, we see a greater sense of the institution of the church. And it's reflected in the scripture, in the pastoral epistles of Timothy and Titus, and the Catholic uh, epistles of Peter, John and James and Jude, also reflect this more structured Christian community with all day and all day in ministry. It kind of shows the sense of where the church was heading. And the bishops are an interesting example of, 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 of a bureaucratic officer. The former elected by the community that took over leadership from that which we used to be exercised by the prophets. Those who had great visions, who owned their own position to their distinctive charismatic gifts. So they were, lead, they were leaders, they were prophets, and the bishops suddenly assumed their place. Now, as we know, Christian, Christian history has always um, been a, a movement. It's always subsequently oscillated between the charismatic and the institutional. We know that. And sometimes it's contained, and sometimes others have kind of drifted off. And the movements of enthusiasm uh, reoccur in most of the centuries in the history of the church. Sometimes breaking away, as I said, from the institutionalised church, like Methodism in, the, in England in the 18th century. And sometimes being contained within it. You could say that the, the, um, certainly the, the evangelical revival of today is, is being contained within the institutional church. And further back, of course, Franciscan, the Franciscans, my goodness, in the 13th century, how they were, um, they were assumed into the church rather than going off into their own sect. But ultimately, the church has to remain, by definition, charismatic. When it ceases to depend on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which we celebrate today on this feast of Whitson, and the gifts associated with the outpouring, if we, if we fail that, then, then we're lost. We're completely lost. With, with the Spirit, lives are transformed and literally inspired, in which we are led from an active faith in our minds to an inner knowledge and experience of God in our hearts and so to action of harmony with God's will for us and not just for us and for our funny little church but for the whole world 
wherever we may be. But the strength, I believe, of the institutional church lies in her continuing insistence that all who are baptised sacramentally receive the Holy Spirit. They receive it by God's grace. Not merely by some self-selecting elite. I'm going to earn this. <laughs> that negates God's love and grace. I believe, actually, it negates the whole essence of the charismatic. So there we are. What a wonderful, what a wonderful way to celebrate Pentecost, Whitson. One in which we are truly charismatic, but in the institution of the church.